Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a summary of the Argo SRV Q&A released on the 28th of February. Some of it is the same info that they gave from the recent Reverse the Verse and is included in my What We Know About Tractor Beams, but it does go into some further detail in some areas. The SRV carries no offensive weaponry, so it relies on shields and armor to survive in combat. If it's being directly attacked, the best course of action is to break away and come back later. Run away! Uh, if you're entering a known hot zone, they recommend you bring an escort along for support or be ready to hot evac uh, someone. So it's going to be dangerous in a lot of situations with the SRV. One of the key design goals for the ship was to enable it to carry cargo around, so you'll be unloading larger cargo ships, such as the Hull series, so Hull D and E. It's a perfect use of the SRV's tractor rig. The Argo SRV can quantum travel while towing its cargo or ship or whatever, whilst the details of jump drive travel are being ironed out at the moment. The original design never accounted for this scenario and requires them revisiting it. However, the current stance is that it will not be able to tow ships through a jump point. If such travel is needed, they recommend towing the vehicle to a nearby repair station first or putting it inside another jump capable vehicle. This is really interesting to me as I foresee lawless systems in the future potentially where no repair facilities exist. That very well and almost certainly is going to be a thing. Not going to be repair facilities and vandal owned systems for example or not human ones. So that might mean that you'd have to repair any ships that are heavily damaged or lose their jump drive for example, with crucibles. Or maybe players will be able to build repair stations or outposts. Otherwise, you'll have capital ships losing their jump drives stranded in certain systems. Though it's also possible they might just revise what they can do with SRVs and towing, and the SRVs will eventually be able to tow, sort of like go through um, jump points with other ships. There is nothing to stop you moving damaged or stuck ground vehicles such as the Nova tank, both on the ground and in space. It's going to work the same way as moving um, damaged spaceships. The SRV can't move outpost modules that are built by uh, the Pioneer. So outpost modules are going to be sort of like physically drilled into the ground surface. So the moving of player-made outposts is restricted to the Pioneer and apparently, potentially, other dedicated ships as well. But the SRV's tractor beam is not strong enough to wrench them out of the ground. Outposts that exist already on moons and planets can't be moved either. Physicalized items in the world can be manipulated, though, if they're within the mass range of a particular tractor beam. Currently, the only dynamic asteroids in-game are the mineable variety that can actually be moved. They are physicalized items, though it is possible to tow those asteroids around if desired. So capturing an item requires it to be relatively immobile and of a certain size so the actual beam can focus on the target. They don't have exact details of the limits yet, but they foresee that players so if you want to target an npc or a player that's on foot or whatever they're not going to be easily trapped by tractor beams because they don't want griefing to occur they don't want people to be picked up and chucked around or um, players flying around that don't want to be picked up for whatever reason or on stations or on the ground um, just to get chucked around by tractors however it does sound like we may be able to grab people that are not struggling that are incapacitated or that want to be tractored potentially in the future. Tractor beams and SRVs have a certain amount of mass that they can move and they can work together to move larger ships or objects. Though this is primarily mass-based, there are some size and volume requirements as well, some restrictions there. Uh, there are no arbitrary design restrictions in terms of ship X can specifically not tractor ship Y though. In regard to preventing ships tractor beaming a target, shields basically will actively block or severely dampen the strength of a tractor beam. If you wish to have your vehicle towed or moved, you will be required to power down your shields, which also puts you in a very vulnerable position. If you wish to guard against theft, 
you just leave your shields up when you're on a planet or landed or at a station or whatever. This should mitigate the risk of people snatching your ship up on the fly as they fly past with an SRV. And because the SRV doesn't have weapons, if a single SRV just happens upon your ship in the vast vastness of a planet or space or whatever, then it's not going to be able to pick it up if your shields are on. It's not going to be able to shoot the shields off or whatever or deal damage to your vehicle. Um, although maybe it could find a way if it like repeatedly rams it or drops things on it or something. We'll have to see what players, crafty little players do. Again, if a target is actively moving around and trying to avoid a tractor beam, it's going to take a lot of skill to try and grab and track to a target, even if it doesn't have shields, even if it's otherwise immobilized other than its its engines or whatever. The tractor beam is primarily designed to pull, though it can also push to an extent. Moving from side to side, rolling and pitching are accomplished by a range of motion available to tractor beams mounts. And um, so it's going to be based on your rig. The SRV obviously has a very good one, but you will have some form of manipulation down the beam's range, basically. Tractor beams consume a massive amount of power, so while the ship's top speed is still attainable, acceleration and fuel economy are going to be negatively impacted when using your tractor beam. The tractor beam can be used in any location, so atmosphere, on the ground, in space, in quantum. However, the environment will affect the difficulty of maintaining and capturing the targeted item. Another of the original design aims was for the SRV to act as a tug ship to help larger ships get from a planet's surface back out into space, and that is still the idea there. If an SRV is a mobile but still has a working tractor beam, can it use its tractor beam to lock onto another ship and then be towed away by that ship? Theoretically, that's possible. However, the non-tractor ship would have to maneuver very cautiously and gently to prevent it from breaking away. The Argo shields do not extend around its target that it is towing. So towing a target puts that thing being towed at great risk because it can't have its shields up. Does the roof dish provide scanning abilities for search and rescue? The dish on the roof is simply a visual styling cue and has no specific gameplay attached to it. SRV also now stands for Standard Recovery Vehicle. I will link my other Argo SRV videos and info on tractor beams in the description below. The sale is on until the 4th of March for that concept ship. However, expect to see these Argo SRVs go on sale a lot more in the future, and they're not on the roadmap yet, so we don't know when they're actually going to be coming out. They might be used for Squadron 42. They seem like a utility vehicle, which is going to be widely used around the verse uh, for lots of different things, not just um, rescuing ships, but also for cargo, for salvage, for mining, uh, aiding in all of that sort of stuff as well. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for February. It's for a Cutlass Black and Star Citizen game package, all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. If you don't have a gaming PC yet or you are upgrading, instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming. They allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high-spec Windows 10 environment to any other PC, Mac or device like a smartphone or tablet. It is working really well in Star Citizen's 3.4 branch and be sure to use the code board GAMER if you do decide to check it out to get a discount. Links below. This channel exists because of its community. If you wish to support the channel further, below there are links to Patreon, Subscribestar, and there's the YouTube channel memberships, literally the join button below this video. VIPs do get some exclusive stuff and early content as a thank you as well. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, please drop a comment below or poke me on discord.gg forward slash boardgamer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.